And so uh, in my mission, um, so like the history of how it came to be is, you know, you know, like any other pidgin language, it was more like a, you know, a way for people to communicate amongst themselves, people of different backgrounds, uh, different languages. And so it really originated from New Guinea side. Uh, that's where the lay mission is. And so where the lay missionaries they serve, they have like a more, because that's where Tok Tokpishin was like basically created. It was more, um, it's more pure over there. They speak it like, like formally pure, like, you know, really like straight down, like real Tokpishin. But where my mission was, um, Tokpishin, it wasn't really, it was more, it was adopted, especially when the country, New Guinea and Papua, they, like where my mission was, that's basically Papua. And so when the country became, became uh, New Guinea and Papua, they became Papua New Guinea as one country. Um, the Papua inside, they adopted Tokpishin more as like the lingua franca. And so it's not really as pure on our side. So like the way the missionaries in our mission, like the way we learned how to speak it, it's a bit more broken down than um, than uh, how late the mission on you know the other side, the lay mission, they speak it. And so basically, like we're speaking like a, you know a pigeon of pigeon, <laughs> a pi like a pigeon version of p something that's already pigeon, <laughs> a pigeon language. Um, but um, it's you know people have their own like accents, their own dialects of doing it. Um, but like for example, like an introduction, like if I would say like. Uh, for example, my name is um, my name is Elder Louis. Um, I'm a missionary of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, is it okay if we share a message with you today? In Tokpijin, that, that would be a name of me, Elder Louis. Me one pla missionary or workman blo Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints lo lo Papa God. And more right, me pla share one pla liklik story one time you know day one pla liklik message, and so. It's uh, basically like, you know, like really broken down English, like really watered down English. And so you could like hear it and you can see it in the spelling, you know, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really simple. Uh, you know, Monday, Tuesday, you know, Monday, uh, Tuesday, uh, what the uh, thing is, um, uh, you know, Wednesday and then Tuesday. Uh, Friday, you know, um, uh, Saturday is, you know, it's, um, it's a lot, um, English, you know, background, um, like something like, for example, like, uh, a hospital, um, it's like really derived, like, you know, a building would be house and then, you know, obviously someone that's sick would be sick. So a hospital would be house sick, like a house where, you know, sick people are at house sick or like a restaurant, uh, for them like food or to eat is kai kai and so it would be you know a restaurant would be house kai you know a place of food a place where food is at and so it's really it's really simple especially as you know it's a pidgin language it's a broken down english so people who are like they already know english it was really easy for us to uh, pick it up so like average missionary would pick up the language after um, three to four months, he would start uh, understanding it like probably two to three months, but he would be like fluent by, you know, I think he would be fluent by the fifth, by the fifth or sixth month. He would be like completely fluent, comfortable in teaching, you know, everything. Um, but yeah, we mostly taught our lessons. I actually found it easier to teach in pidgin than English because English you could go, you know, you could say different words. To say one thing, uh, you can go different ways, but pigeon is like, there's one way. <laughs> there's only like one way you can go with it. And, you know, it's it's easy, but sometimes, for example, like teaching the law of chastity, we had to like go really straightforward. So it was pretty awkward sometimes because I was at, when we were teaching in pigeon. In English, that's why sometimes I preferred like uh, pigeon in English when we taught the law of chastity or something like that because um, teaching it in pigeon is kind of like, like we want to be kind of sensitive, polite around that areas, you know, and then, you know, we taught it in pidgin. If we taught it in pure pidgin, it would be, you know, people would laugh at us. And so we kind of had to, there were some uh, areas that we had to like, uh, you know, use our head, you know, you know use our head, use the spirit, like, uh, you know, find a way around things. Um, but, you know, honestly, like how, you know, we all know that, you know, our, we don't like, we try to do it our way. It doesn't work out. And so, you know, the best thing to do when we teach 
especially in pidgin is um you know we follow the spirit to what to say you know how to say it when's the best time to say it um because even though like the pidgin it's a pidgin language you know you can it's easy when you go uh that way with tokpishin but at the same time there's a lot of places that you can go wrong there's like a lot of stories where missionaries have uh stuffed up a lesson or like of like they're trying to get a meaning across with a foreign language and they say like a wrong thing or they say a funny thing it's or it's weird you know it's, it's the same thing in um in Tokpish and I had my experiences where I said the wrong thing and people laughed at me I didn't know what I said but um yeah, it's a real uh, it's it's a real easy language it sounds funny to the ear at first like it's hard to understand but um if you put your you know your time into it you just talk to people all the time you know, especially the little kids, you just conversate, conversate in um, Tokpishin, you know, you just pick it up fast.